Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com. Today is This Week on the Homestead episode, I believe 11. We've been doing some work on our barn. There's a lot more work to do, but we had some foundation work done. We've painted the roof. We actually used a metal roof coating that is supposed to help with leakage. Actually, first Luke caulked all of the holes, repaired it by adding in new screws. He did a ton of work up there and then painted it with the roof coating. And then we painted the side of the barn as well because it had been neglected for so many years. He said it just soaked in paint like you wouldn't believe we went through so much paint. I also wanted to give you a little tour of our barn. That's what we've been working on on the homestead this week. And now I'm gonna show you what our barn looks like because I think it's been quite a while since I've showed you this barn and I really never showed you a lot of it. Okay, when you first walk up to the barn, we've replaced a lot of boards. I showed this in a different This Week on the Homestead, but almost every one of the boards here on the side of the barn has been replaced by us because they were all rotted out like that one right there is. So when you looked from the house, it just looked really beat up and old. Luke added some rocks that he found around the property. And then this right here was open and Luke built a door. We did this so we can keep the dog away from the goats. When you first walk into this area of the barn, we have our workshop, which is Luke's tools, saw. He's got a miter saw and a table saw, all of his different tools. And then of course we have some storage like most barns. We have his camper shell. This is where the kids actually, Luke helped a little bit, of course, but they built a little fort. It's just a fun thing. Got some chickens perching for the night. I'm gonna go put them in their coop here shortly. But this is the area here in the first section of the barn that we designated for the goats to have night shelter. Here is where I drop the hay every morning. Luke just built a little pallet feeder thing. That way it can go straight into there. We found that the goats really don't like eating off of the ground. We used to just throw them some hay and they did not like that at all. Here, it's so cute, little buckling. This is where the baby goats go at night. They sleep here, we shut this little door, and then that way I can milk the mother in the morning. Luke just painted that fresh, so it looks really pretty. So here's the freshly painted. He still needs to paint the hardware for the barn door or what it slides on. It's looking a lot better. All right, I'm gonna take you up into the hayloft. Okay, this is the current entrance and I have to admit, I'm a little scared of heights. So I don't like going up here. This is where we store the hay. We just get alfalfa from a local farmer. And this was a door originally, but Luke blocked it off because the kids were opening it and that was kind of scary. So obviously, we're pretty high up. This is where I throw the hay down to Jenny and Blair and the kids. Here is a little fence Luke put up so that the kids could be up here and not fall, which I like and he needs to do over on the other side as well. Okay, now I'm gonna take you into the exciting part of the loft that I someday want to host. I just imagine like a big fall party in here with string lights and a big farm table full of pumpkins. Luke has patched the floor some, but definitely is still super scary to me. He's walked all over it though and has no problem, but to me, it's just a little terrifying. But it's really tall. It's really hard to capture how big it is in here. Okay, moving on to the next section. Now, I rarely make it over here. Everybody else in my family does, but evidently, I'm scared of heights. I didn't, I knew I was sort of scared of heights, but I became more aware when I tried to walk through our old barn. I mean, I just literally feel like I'm gonna fall through the floor, but I know I'm not. Okay, now this side is another loft and Luke needs to put another fence up because it's very high. So it kind of scares me with the kids, but I really think that we could do a lot with this space with enough work. Just be so cool. All right, let's go back downstairs. That would make me feel better. I can show you down there. Over here on this side, we find lots of evidence of stall doors. You can see a stall door there. You can see one, if you look closely right there, there's a hinge. And then moving on down past the kids' little 
fort, you can see another one here. From everything we can gather from local people and just from people who've looked at our barn, it was a dairy barn. Now this area in here, we believe was once the milking parlor. And then we just have a whole bunch of random storage. We've gotten rid of a lot of things, but I really have the desire to make this operate at least in some capacity like it would have, probably not near to the scale, but I want to have animals in here. Now here we have what appears to be a really large feeding trough that connects over to, that connects to the silo where the baby goats go in at night. So that right there ahead is the door that we blocked off because the baby goats sleep in there at night, but that's what would have connected to this. We also had some, a little bit of concrete issues here, but Luke just filled in all of the holes with new concrete. So this is a nice little area here as well that currently he has his weights, his weight bench, and doesn't obviously get used that often. All right, you think we should mix it up? Well, I have one too. What do we need first? Uh, you got yeah. your mixing tools? Yeah. Oh, there's, there's some mixing tools, yep. Yeah, you got I your got, dog? I got my uh, Here, let me show you the way to do it. You just make a line. Yeah, yeah. Like that. And try not to breathe it. Stand back, okay? You don't want to breathe the dust. Let the dog out of the way. Here's how our barn looks from the outside. We are having a outdoor movie tonight, so Luke has up a little screen and his projector, but this is how the outside of the barn looks. You can see originally where they would have gotten out the hay. Essentially, the barn, the original barn was here in the middle, and then there are two really large lean-tos. Then over in this section, this barn door here, of course, closes, but Luke has it open currently because this is where we store our other van that we don't use very often. This is the area that whenever, I think it was this week on the Homestead episode two, we were clearing it out so that we could put the van over here and put the goats over where the van used to be. So if you want to see more on this section, that will be in the same playlist this week on the Homestead episode Two. Since our driveway entrance here wasn't the original entrance to this farm, the barn is the first thing you see when you come into our property and the house is set way back. I actually really like that because it provides a buffer and we're all about privacy when moving here. That was one of the main goals. And so the huge barn is the first thing that will greet you when you enter. I wanted to give you a quick garden jungle update. I always overplant. that is my tendency. So here's my flower bed. I can hardly get over to my pumpkin patch and my zucchini. My tomatoes are officially a total jungle, but everything seems to be going really well. I've trained some butternut squash all the way up the two tour. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing our 19th century barn. It was built sometime in the late 1800s. You can check out my entire playlist for this week on the homestead. I have 10 other episodes. I'm just documenting all that we've been working on to turn our seven acres into a homestead. Because we live in an 1860s Victorian farmhouse, much of the land has been 
not really used for growing food and raising animals in the last several years. Of course, it originally was, and we are documenting the process of turning it into more of a homestead. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.